House of Mourning is a more closer uh, thinking of God. I even, uh, it even said that uh, at this time, some people that don't even come to church like mm -hmm. they should, when they go to a funeral, when it says right here uh, that they uh, think about improvements on their life, you know, sitting there like, you know what, I don't come to church no more. Even that thought passes people when they're at funerals, when they have not been going to church like they should. So it's a lot of benefits out of going to the house of mourning. and it does put you in a state of deep thought of your life. Okay, and that's true, that's true. Well, I'm, I'm fixing to play the devil's advocate. <laughs> All right, uh, next Friday is Christmas Day. All right? Mm -hmm. And we hear it now. Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many of us are planning to go to a funeral? On next Friday. No, because at this moment, <laughs> not that we know of. Everybody's trying to be happy. Nobody, we talking about Jesus dead. Everybody's trying to be happy. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. <laughs> I mean, you know, some people, everybody wants to go. Everybody wants to go. Everybody wants to go. Really, nobody wants to die. Everybody wants to go to heaven. But nobody really wants to die when they think about it. If you ask, Brother Frazier, you ready to die? Or we would say, you, your, your, your human aspect would be safe. No, Sister Fultz, I'm not ready to die. But, but, but okay, and, and that's true. But, but what I'm trying to get you to visualize is the message that he's projecting. Mm -hmm. He says, and, 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 you know, because you know, sometimes when you read the Bible, you do read mm -hmm. the Bible based upon your way of thinking. What right. makes right. studying the Bible yeah. hard mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. is trying to get out of your, stop trying to shape what God is saying by what you think, mm -hmm. think. Amen. And grasp what he's saying. Yeah. And it's better to go to the house of mourning. Mm -hmm. That's not easy for us to grasp. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Okay. And that's why I asked the question. You know, how many of us are going to go to a funeral, even plan, or even think of? If you had a loved one to pass away, do you think you would plan the funeral on Christmas Day? No. Because, because we like the house of feasting. Christmas Day, we're more in the house of feasting. But he says it's better to go to the house of mourning than the house of feasting. Because the house of mourning is going to bring us, going to help us. And we still, we, we, we not, we not the one that's, we coming to the funeral. So, so that morning is going to help us to get us ourselves better for that day, because it's going to be one day that we're going to be sitting there and we ain't going to be able to listen and to make it better for ourselves. Right. So that's what, it'll, it'll prick us, mm -hmm. prick our minds to, you know, to, 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 to get, get it right, mm -hmm. you know, because we keep coming. But we got to get it right. We don't get, you know, because one day you're going to lay up there and you'll be able to say nothing else and it ain't going to be no more. Right. So, right. It, you know, it's, it, it, that's why he's saying it's better. Because at the feast, you're going to go down and laugh and talk and grin and skin. And, you know, it ain't going to be nothing about death or, 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 or you know, going to hell. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. it's just going to be good times. But the funeral is going to bring back some deep memories about why you or a Christian or why you want to, you know, straighten your life up and go to heaven, you know, because they, every time, you ain't going to get, every day you ain't going to get to come and straighten everything out. Sooner or later it's going to be your day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, okay. so, so the more you straighten it out, the better you're going to be. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. It says, um, better go to the house in the morning than go to the house in the feasting. 
for that is the end of all men, and the living will take it to heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. The living mm -hmm. will take it to heart. Will take it to heart. What will the living take to heart? Because <laughs> death, death is coming. Yeah. 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 This is real. It's not guaranteed. Why? Okay. All right. Okay. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> If, if he says, this is the end of all men, okay, all right. When he says the end of all men, the house, when we go to the house of mourning, the house of mourning is the end of all men, okay. In what respect? Then yeah. life is over on the earth. Life is over mm -hmm. on the earth. earth. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, life is over on the earth. Mm -hmm. Okay, death is the end for everybody on the earth. Right. Okay, but now remember, Solomon has become the preacher. Mm -hmm. Okay, now before he became the preacher, everything was about his existence where? On the earth. On the earth. On the earth. On the earth. But the house of mourning, why is the house of mourning death? Because it's not. Go ahead. It's going to take you further than, than the earth. It's going to take you to heaven. I mean, a judgment day, and, you know. It's the, the, last, the last, how long? Forever. How long does the house of feasting last? Temporary. It's temporary. Yeah, a little while. It's temporary. Yeah. Okay. It's temporary. So, in our lifetime, what do we grasp and hold on to so tight? Yeah. The temporary stuff. Yeah. The temporary stuff. Think about how many temporary things you have placed before God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Temporary things. Right. How, how much temporary stuff have we put more faith in, in than we've placed in God? See, Solomon had more riches than we could imagine. Right. But is Solomon coming to the point where he's concluding that all this stuff is what? Vanity. No, it's temporary. It's temporary. It's temporary. Mm -hmm. No, when, it be, when does it become vanity? Life without God mm -hmm. is meaningless. Mm -hmm. right. okay. When I'm trying to handle all this stuff without being guided by God, that's right. Then, and and I, I, now I'm not. I'm not being judgmental of anyone, because I'm I'm in the same world that you all are in. So when I'm teaching the class, don't even allow yourself to start, you know, trying to judge me, because I've already told you I ain't perfect. I'm just teaching my lesson, okay? All right. So, so I don't have to up so nobody. All right. Uh, when uh, when we take what we have in this life and we place the confidence in it as if what we have is all there is to life. Oh, Lord, I'm right. Then we're choosing, we're choosing the, the temporary over the, the eternal. See, now, the, the, the precious ointment, that's me. That's me. That, that's I'm, I'm set out, you know. I'm, I want to make me good without God. See, if I if, if I good name is better than precious on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, my name can't be good. Nothing about me can be good right, without God. God. Right. John 15. He says, "Abide in me, and I in you. Without me, you, you can what? You can do nothing. Right. You are nothing. So we're nothing without God." 
precious ointment over the good name, that means that I'm choosing me right. over God. Yes, right? Mm -hmm. Then if I, if I choose the house of feasting over the house of mourning, I'm choosing the temporary over the eternal. Over the eternal. Yes. See? Because, it, because death is my entrance. Right. Into eternity. Mm -hmm. yes, okay. right. The house of mourning. Mm -hmm. Why is it better? Because it's my entrance right. into eternity. Mm -hmm. That's why it's better. It's not that, you know, it's not that I'm going to get up on Christmas uh, uh, morning and say, you know, uh, the Bible says the house of mourning is better than the house of feasting, so I'm just going to go hang out at the funeral home. <laughs> You know, uh, no, it's the idea that it's death that enters me into eternity. Mm -hmm. And if I value the temporary right. over the eternal in this, on this side of life, I lose out. that's going to mess me up that's right. on the other side, side right. of life. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see, so, so uh, you know, so... When I do see that, I do reflect, mm -hmm. you know, I do examine. Uh, and that's what Solomon is doing in this writing. He's right. examining. Yeah, I mean, yeah. okay. And we say that every Lord's Day, that every man do what? Examine, examine himself. himself. Second Corinthians 13, 5, examine yourself mm -hmm. when you be in the faith. Look in the mirror. Right. Look at yourself in the mirror. A lot of times, you know, we will look at other people, right. but then when it comes down to looking at ourselves, we don't want right. to see it. Mm -hmm. You know, but we have to examine ourselves. Okay. So, uh, so, so, so it's yeah. Now, now, uh, of course, the temporary is better uh, than the eternal. Okay, mourning is better than. Than laughter, okay. Um, is Solomon suggesting that <coughs> we're not supposed to have an enjoyable time in our life? No, no, no. 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 Mm -hmm. What, what, uh, what, uh, how can you, how, how do you come to the conclusion? Is it, you know, do you come to that conclusion because that just doesn't sound right? Or is it anything in Solomon's writing that gives you, you know, the idea that uh, he really believes that? Is there anything in his writing that gives you the idea that he uh, he believes that uh, because he had it all already. He, I mean, he had everything. He enjoyed it all. He, you know, he just realized that he couldn't take it. You know, it wasn't gonna go with him. Mm -hmm. That he needed to put his priorities in the right spot. Mm -hmm. You can enjoy it, but you still got to understand that you can't take this with you. This physical, see, we want to tend to, to, to take what we see and, 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 and think that's going to be it. But we have to look, our mind must go further than what we see. Yeah. You in, know? Verse, in verse 4, he says, the heart of the wise right. is in the house of mourning. Mm -hmm. right. But the heart of fools is in the house of earth <laughs> or in the house of but, <coughs> Solomon's writing uh, of, uh, as you were asking, uh, that part of his writing tells you that his, his understanding and knowledge base has grown since, you know, um, all the follies and all that running up against and he, he's tasting and, and sampling and living his life the way he lived it. Now the measure of a man that he's become now, knowing that God has blessed him with the days that he had given him. Throughout all this, God did not take 
not one breath from me. He's still now, as he's writing in Ecclesiastes, as the preacher and not the king, that tells us that God did not take not a breath from him. Even though his, his judgment lies with God, not man. We are reading the aftermath now, and we thank God for it. But Solomon is now giving us a glimpse of his understanding of all that party and I done. Every, and people were falling by the wayside, but it wasn't him. Everyone that died in his house, you know, you're saying uh, servants, children, people that were dying in his house, his understanding now of what God has given him has come full circle. Now he can see now that he may have parted on a day when he should have been planning the funeral as the king for that servant who was so good in his house because Queen Sheba said to herself, it, it's an honor to be here and to look at all these men who come and, and hear your wise word. And they all are standing there before you waiting to hear you speak. Every person that came in the kingdom. So if one of his servants fell, I can only imagine that he's probably writing this from the perspective of, well, I was feasting and having fun and living and doing all the things I wanted to do that wasn't for God. But in the house that was mourning when my servant fell or his child fell, they were out mourning and I was still out pottering and partying. But God had blessed me with the days to see even after that. So now we get a glimpse of him seeing his life from that transgression to now as the preacher. Now he can truly say within himself, I should have been where it was most wisest to be. Because even with all the knowledge and everything, for him to write this, that the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning. And he had all wisdom, according to scripture as it's written. For him to write this now, that's saying he was at a certain point here, but now he's at this point. He can see that over his life, that this is the better place to have been because his connection to God now comes through knowing that in death, he wants to be right with God. Right, right. Uh, also, uh, the 12th chapter, he believes that he was having, um, no. He had seen all things. The only thing is to conclude the whole matter. Give God and keep his commandments. Right, right. Um, the, the, he uses the terminology um, uh, the, that the house of mourning is the end of all men and all the living take it to heart. Okay. Then, then read, read verse 4 again. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, mm -hmm. but the heart of fools is in the house of mourning, in the house of Okay, so, so, so he says, he says, um, okay, we're gonna take it to heart. Then he says, a heart is gonna be somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so what, what we experience, we're gonna take it to heart. Mm -hmm. Right. And then our heart is gonna be somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, whatever I gain from what I experience, taking it to heart, because mm -hmm. because I ask. What, what do we take to heart? Right. Okay. Whatever I gain, I'm, I'm going, it's going to be lodged in my mm -hmm. brain. So when you take something to heart, right. what, are you, what, what are you going to do with what you take to heart? You're going to add it to your knowledge. Mm -hmm. You're going to add it to your thinking. What part of your thinking? Because he's talking about wise and fools. So to wisdom, what is wisdom? Wisdom is wisdom is the ability to make sound what decisions and judgments based upon knowledge and experience you receive. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna get some knowledge, but then wisdom is gonna be how I utilize the knowledge that I gain, the experience that I gain. So I'm gonna whatever whatever I take to heart, I'm gonna utilize it. One way or the other, mm -hmm. either positive or mm -hmm. negative, right? So he says the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning. Mm -hmm. Question. Where is Solomon's riches? His riches is in his mind. 
it's, 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 it's eternal thinking. It's, 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 it